Hi everybody, how are you? Hope everything's good. Bit of a change of pace this week. I'm not just talking about the facial hair either. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, an acoustic guitar from Martin, which is very nice, and from their X series. <laughs> Okay, this is the Martin DX1 AEL, which is a left-handed acoustic guitar from those wonderful folk at Martin Guitars. They make some really nice high-end acoustics, and they also make some more budget versions, which is what this category, this falls into that category as part of the X series. Before we get on to um, specs and pricing and stuff like that, just need to talk about the Martin website for us lefties because it's not great. I went on there looking to see what models were available and nothing was really showing as to what was available left-handed. In fact, I didn't see any lefties at all. When I did type in left-handed in the search bar on their website, it asked if I meant leather-handed. And then it was uh, asking me if I was interested in some sort of uh, satchel bag thing, which I wasn't. I just wanted to find your left-handed guitars, Martin, but I couldn't find them anywhere. Here's the ironic thing. Martin make loads of left-handed guitars starting from like, you know, lower price, 600, 700 pounds, right up into the thousands. They even do a Johnny Cash uh, left-handed signature model, which is something we talked about in a previous episode about availability for signature models and left-handed guitars. So you're going to have to rely on Google and I really hope Martin do something about their website to make the lefties uh, more prominent because they really should be missing out on a trick there, you know. There are so many different ones. Go on Google, have a look like I did, and you'll see a huge list. Let's talk about the specs of this guitar. The top is made of spruce. The back, the sides, and the neck are all actually made of a mahogany high-pressure laminate, which is essentially what's keeping the cost down on this guitar. That and the manufacturing location as it's made in Mexico. But I don't think it takes away from the tone. I think it still sounds brilliant, and I think it's a good price for a roadworthy Martin acoustic guitar. I like the other touches like the tuning pegs up here on the back they're Martin branded. The fingerboard and the bridge is what's called rich light and the electronics that you get in this are Fishman Sonitone and the other cool thing is they're not that invasive like on the look of the guitar because the volume and tone controls are actually just sat inside the sound hole here. Still really easy to access. The 9 volt goes in uh, just a little flap at the end there next to the guitar input. So all in, a really good guitar for the money. Now, I've owned this guitar for about 18 months, so it's certainly not as long as a lot of my other acoustics, but so far, so good. I really like it, aside from a couple of issues that I'll get onto in just a minute. But I've actually got my old pal, Tom Milner, to blame for this one. Tom is a fellow lefty, and uh, I'm gonna have him on here, actually, as a guest at some point soon. And he used his one of these on the American Idiot tour. He had a lot of uh, on stage bits where he was playing, particularly on his own sometimes. And he would always rave to me about how much he loved his Martin acoustic. So it was when we were in Blackpool, I think we did some promo filming, just me and Tom. And I said to him, "Look, I'm going to uh, I'm going to use your guitar for this. I'll put a link to it." And when I tried it, I absolutely loved it. I think I probably had a couple more goes on it throughout the the, the space of that tour. So when we wrapped up, I ordered one and I got it. Now, here's the thing. When you order a 
a guitar that's uh, let's say under a thousand pound more in the budget category you will expect you're gonna have to do quite a bit of setting up whether it's an acoustic whether it's electric you know even higher end guitars I've had to do a lot of setups on just to get the action down to where I want it make it more your own you know this guitar came it had particularly high action which I sort of knew it would and I knew I'd have to bring it down spend a bit of time perhaps with the truss rod and the and the saddle here and so I got my trusty I don't know if you guys have ever seen these this is what I usually use for adjusting action on acoustics this is like a thing that you get from Ikea on one end it's got like a little uh, posi screwdriver thing and the other end it's an allen key shape and this is usually a perfect angle for getting in getting in the hole and uh, adjusting the truss rod so I got this out as I usually do and I looked in the hole and it was going nowhere what I didn't realize and here's a word of warning for you if you get a Martin acoustic guitar you need a specialist uh, allen key for it because it goes it starts so far down the neck here's the one that I had to buy look at the size of that thing so I couldn't really do much actually I borrowed one of my friends to begin with until I got this and uh, yeah that goes all the way down it actually goes up to about there I think so that's how far into the neck it goes so that was the first thing I didn't realize if you want to make any trust rod adjustments you need to buy one of these um, and the other thing was I I sanded down the saddle I took the saddle out sand it down a little bit and it's about where I want it I would like it a little bit lower if I could start to get a little bit buzzy and the one thing I have really noticed about this guitar in when I have used it is it seems like it is quite uh, susceptible to humidity issues if you're in a particularly humid place or somewhere there's a lot of damp around I'm talking about pits and stuff like that you know it can have quite an effect on it and uh, it can start to get a little bit buzzy and you've got to sort of readjust a few things here and there other than that though it's a great guitar and uh, one that I no doubt will be using for some time to come nearly there but I just wanted to uh, do our little lefty run and this week it's about when you're looking online at guitars and you're looking at a guitar to buy or just having a peruse or whatever and you see a really nice guitar and you think oh, I'll have a look at that and then you start enlarging the images and it all looks great but then you realize it's not actually a lefty model that they've that they're showing in the picture it's actually a right-handed model that they've flipped around just to give some sort of representation and uh, I'm gonna next time next time you have a look at lefties have a look closely at the headstocks of guitars and you'll be amazed how often this happens i'm going to show some examples here and i definitely like the uh the effort that one particular shop went to to uh to photoshop the uh the gibson logo back on the right way although it's not quite straight but just forgot to do anything with the sg logo there so yeah it's one of those little annoyances that you want to see the actual lefty guitar picture not a picture of a right-handed one that's just been mirrored um it's probably not even down to the shops to be honest it's probably down to the brands themselves not providing the pictures through but come on jesus just uh show us the the proper guitars i think that's about it i've got one question that came in recently which was um will i be doing a demo on my tobacco burst uh, les paul which i used to use live on a lot of the marshall shows yes definitely in fact uh, we'll start doing some vintage bits soon so that's about it hope you've had fun and i will see you on the next one